Hi, I'm Michelle Grizoulis, and I'm the president of the Foundations at Rochester Regional Health, and I'm here today with Dr. Daniel Day from our sports medicine area at Rochester Regional Health. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Happy to have you here. Yeah, happy to be here. Good. So today we're going to talk about sports injuries, and in particular, ACL injuries, and in a moment that will make sense, and you'll know what that means. So let's start there, actually. Can yeah. you tell us what an ACL tear is? Or let's start with what is an ACL? Yeah, sure. So I actually brought this nice little model here. So Do you we'll like be able the props to kind of yeah, show you what an ACL is. So okay. this is a knee model. If we kind of peel back the kneecap here, we actually have the ACL in the middle of the knee. So the ACL is actually the main stabilizer of the knee. So when it gets torn, we have a lot of motion through the knee. And what ends up happening is in an ACL injury, it's usually actually a non-contact injury. So you might think that it would be somebody colliding with you yeah. causing the ligament to tear, but actually it is usually a plant and twist. So what happens is the foot plants and the leg moves and you sometimes will get actually a bony contusion on the outside part of the knee and then the um, knee will twist and you end up with an ACL tear. Is that twisting normal though? So, I mean, what makes it tear versus just kind of move naturally as the leg? So if we actually have some good supporting muscles and strength okay. through the, the knee and the leg, we can actually support the knee better, which means you land better and you keep the knee better underneath you. But when some of those muscles are actually weak, we end up getting this twisting injury and then that ACL is uh, at risk for rupture. So simply said, an ACL tear is that particular ligament tearing. Yep, so this okay. ligament. So in bigger knee injuries, uh, you might see some in the NFL um, where they're getting actually knee uh, dislocations. Those are multi-ligament knees. But typically in a, a plant twist, you're getting that ACL. Sometimes you actually catch this meniscus in here as well. And if you're getting a meniscus tear along with it, then usually when they go in to fix things, they're addressing more than just the ACL. Yeah. So I know from having kids that played sports that this is um, somewhat of a common injury, but it appears that either we're talking about it more or we're actually seeing it more. So what is it? Well, I think part of the media piece of it is we're noticing it more in the younger population. Okay. So now the younger population, even from 5-year-old to 14-year-old, is actually having increased or higher rate of ACL tears. So that's where... 5 years old? So five years old, yeah. So that's where some of these studies are coming. Obviously, we're getting more of these numbers coming from the 10 to 14-year-old, but um, still, 10 to 14-year-olds have open growth plates, which means a whole different mm -hmm. issue compared to the skeletally, skeletally mature athlete. Yeah. So. so it isn't necessarily as much on the rise as we're seeing it younger. Is that because kids are specializing in sports at a younger age? Yeah, so, I mean, sports special specialization is certainly one of the big things that we you know, worry about and is also a hot topic. Yeah. Um, so what we're seeing is actually um, uh, student athletes, they're actually doing one sport. So they're doing this year round. They're not having breaks. Um, so not only do we see this in the office with just the knees, but I also see back pain and yeah. knee injuries and hip injuries because um, the kids just aren't getting a break. Um, they also don't get a downtime. So yeah. there's no off season. They don't have a strengthening program. They're just going from one basketball team to the next basketball team to the next basketball team. So it's an overuse issue as yeah. much, too. Overuse, and the body just can't accommodate. I mean, you have kids, right? So yeah. They, yeah. Did they, were they one-sport athletes, or did they play multiple sports? Multiple sports. Yeah. And a, my son in particular has had injuries uh, that I think are a result of overuse as well as just collisions that happen. Yeah, so our kids need a break. You know, um, one, of my, one of the coaches at the NCAA level, Urban Meyer, who – you know, I hate yeah. saying this because I'm a Penn Stater, um, but <laughs> he's the Ohio State. It's okay State, to say that out yeah. loud. <laughs> <laughs> he's an Ohio State football coach, yes, he is. and um, he actually recruits three-sport athletes. So he doesn't want just football players. He wants the athlete that has been playing three sports through the whole high school career, and then he wants to make them a football player from there. Yeah. So these kids are less burned out, they're less injury-prone. Um, and they're having better success at that level. And probably more holistic muscle development because they're using different muscles in right. the different sports that they're playing. Correct. That makes sense. So they have off-season, they're doing different sports, so different muscles are, are stronger and not breaking down. So one of the questions I was going to ask you, and it sounds like you've touched on that already, is advice to single sport athletes. So, you know, what you're saying is if you can, make sure that there's conditioning that takes place to build up the muscles mm -hmm. and think about multi-sports as an option to kind of create some. But for those that are single sport athletes, what are, what's the best advice you give to your patients who say, how do I avoid this or what do I do? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, those come into the office, they're, they're swimmers, they're basketball players, they're not going to play another sport. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See? Yeah. 
Um, so what ends up happening is I usually encourage breaks in off seasons. So if, even if they are going to be single sport, um, they need breaks throughout the week. So sh they should be actually encouraging a good strengthening program. So, I mean, look at Michael Phelps. He doesn't yeah. swim year round. Yeah. He has an off season where he's actually um, work in the gym, working on his strength. And then he has more strength and stabilization going into the swim season. And he's peaking for big events, yeah. whether it's the Worlds or the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and we don't see that at the youth level. They're swimming all the time. They don't have an off season. So I'm usually encouraging different times throughout the year where they're getting an off season. Um, I'm encouraging breaks throughout the week. And if they can, add another sport. So for swimming, running would be a great yeah. thing to do. Offset. Yeah. Um, you said five, you said four to five days a week or five to six days a week? Five to six. I mean, it really depends on the, the situation and the athlete. And I know from some, from my own experience as a parent of student athletes that they, it also, I mean, some of these sports train three to four hours a day. And so it's probably also five to six <coughs> days, three to four hours a day is a lot. Yeah. I mean, you get your six to eight year olds that are in the, doing gymnastics four hours yeah, a day. I tough. mean, they're, they're burning out yeah. quick. So. I'm going to pause and just remind the group. First of all, we're here with Dr. Daniel Day from our sports medicine department at Rochester Regional Health talking about ACL injuries. And I wanted to check, are there any questions? What are you, what's your advice to parents um, weight training? You know, I'm sure you're seeing kids train at a younger age. I mean, do That's you a have good advice question. to parents who are in that scenario? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly people in the community that can help with that. Um, if there is an injury, a lot of times I start with physical therapy and I get you with a good physical therapist that can help build the foundation. And then we advance you from there and get you into somebody who can uh, progress your program. I mean, it, vary, it actually varies from sport to sport. Uh, so you want to be supporting the musculature that you, you know, depending on your sport. So runners are going to be doing things different than swimmers. Football yeah. players are going to be doing things different than baseball players. Um, so we're kind of building that program on what your goals are. Um, and then we're developing that on the off-season piece of it so you have a good strength training uh, routine. So here's sort of a trivia question. What sports do you see? What The ACL tears that you see, what's the most predominant sport that causes them if there is a? Uh, I would say with the running and cutting sports. Okay. So your lacrosse, lacrosse basketball, yep. Yep. soccer, uh, football. So again, it's that plant and, yeah. plant and twist. It's a lot of them. Yeah, it is a lot of them. Tennis? Um, tennis, a plant and twist. Uh, but we don't see as many, probably just because sheer numbers of people playing tennis versus, say, football or, yeah. or baseball. Um, but certainly it's just that plant and twist mechanism yeah. that is a higher risk. So you mentioned a couple things that people can do to protect. So build the mu I heard you say build the muscle around mm -hmm. the knee. What are other things that parents should be thinking about or athletes listening should be thinking about to protect themselves to avoid the injury? Um, I mean, those are the biggest things. So there's actually studies out there showing that by strengthening the hip and core, that's the biggest preventer for, really? for ACLs. So if you actually come back to the, the knee model here, what ends up happening is if you have weak uh, muscles through the hip, yep. you kind of start to land in this position. So if you're already landing in this position, all it takes is a, a twist. Whereas if we can strengthen everything up here and keep everything in a line, now you're landing correctly, so you have to have a lot more go wrong to get into this situation. And the strength up here creates, that carries the pressure that, that holds Yeah, so the this weight. is what okay. holds the knee. We're also looking at mechanics in general. Oh, um, so strength will improve your mechanics, but we also want to make sure that when you do jump that you're landing in plane rather yeah. than landing with your knees collapsing in. Um, so looking at mechanics is another way. And usually okay. if we find that somebody is jumping and landing incorrectly, we can associate that with poor core musculature and hip musculature. So it's kind of that warning sign or that red flag. Okay. Um, you know, part of my exam in the office is I'm having somebody do a squat, or I may have them jump or walk in the office, and we can pick up these little subtleties to say, you're at a higher, you're having knee yeah. pain now, but you're also at risk for an ACL tear. It's interesting. You wouldn't think about that, but it's sort of a preventative way to Yeah, to, it's a functional-based yeah. uh, approach. So let's talk about the um, surgery to repair it. What do you do? And then talk about the recovery from that. So when you talk about ACL surgery, I mean, the good thing is we have a lot of great surgeons that can yeah. repair the ACL. But ultimately, if you can have your normal ACL, you're going to want it. So when you do need repair, um, they try to use your own tissue. So they'll actually use, um, they can actually use the patellar tendon to repair it and they reconstruct it, but this isn't um, something that you would use in that age group that we're talking about today because yeah. they still have growth plates open here and here, so they're not going to take that tissue. Um, so the hamstring also wraps around here too, so they can use that hamstring tendon and then they can recreate the, the ACL. Okay. 
Um, and somebody that's older, you can use a cadaver graft, somebody that doesn't have as high impact, but you know, the better results are, are with your own tissue. And then the, the biggest thing is, you know, they're, you know, they may be out for six to 12 months, mm -hmm. depending on how they do, and it's usually a progression. So as you get stronger through the hip, you're able to do your jumps and activities, um, and everything's looking good, then they progress you. But your highest risk of retear is within that first 12 months. Yeah. So I, I know that from my own experience. Yeah. yeah, so if you get a 14-year-old or somebody that just tore, I mean, you're gonna wanna kinda make sure that their hip muscles and everything are, are strong enough to be able to support the graft. You want the graft to be healed within, uh, within the knee so that they can keep moving. You must have a lot of patients, or patients that aren't happy because what you're asking them to do is to be patient with the recovery. And yeah. young kids who want to get out and play their sport don't want to take the time for the recovery. Yeah, no, I mean, even getting the news of, you know, we think you yeah. tore your ACL. I know, it's I mean, tough. they've had a friend or family member that's been through it, so they know the time frame of recovery. Yeah. So what inspired <coughs> you? Did you play sports in high school? Uh, yes, so I played um, mainly baseball, but, you know, we also uh, did bowling and skiing and golf and some other sports. Did you ever tear your well. ACL? Nope. You didn't. Good job. Mm -mm. Uh, what inspired you to become a, do a, a sports medicine physician? You know, it's funny you, you ask that. Um, a lot of people might have an injury or something that kind of yeah, leads them in this I direction. Wondered. But I, I was never really hurt. I always actually wanted to avoid the doctor, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, it's ironic. So, yeah, I know. But I always appreciated the way that the body moves. I always appreciated mechanics. And I actually went to the training room, but it was usually with my teammates in, mm -hmm. in college. So I would go there, see what they were doing. Um, and that led me to shadowing my team position, and oh, interesting. that's how I ended up where I am today. Interesting. And you like it? Yeah, love it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I can tell, actually, yeah. in talking with you. Um, outside, let's talk about other than ACLs. What are the most, in your sports medicine world, what are the other injuries that you see? Do you care for concussions? Yes, so concussion's another okay. hot topic. So anything really that involves injury, I mean, we have a concussion clinic, and we're seeing a ton of concussions, yeah. especially with all the media stuff. Um, but then from there, it's, you know, from pediatric um, sports injuries from shoulders to backs to knees and hips. Um, probably the majority of my practice, though, is those that are still trying to stay in shape. So whether they're dealing with arthritis now yeah. or they're weekend warriors. So that's a high percentage of my practice as well. As I'll long as we can keep point. people moving, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. With all the other stuff we talk about, the best yeah. thing you can do is exercise. Yep. What's the best part of your job? What do you love most about your work? Uh, I would say being in the community. You know, I enjoy being in the community. We take care of, um, you know, local RIT athletes. We take care of local mm -hmm. high schools. Love taking care of the student athletes, but also just the family uh, interaction and being able to take care of the whole family and the whole person yeah. is probably the best part. That's great. That's yeah. great. I'm going to check with Phil. No questions? We're good? Okay. So let's do a little bit of a wrap up. So um, what I've learned from you is that the best way to avoid it is to... Uh, use lots of muscles, build muscle, mm -hmm. um, vary your exercise, yep. and take some breaks. Take breaks throughout the yep, take breaks. week. And, yep, exactly. Yep. And visit your, what's the first thing, let me ask you this, if someone senses that they have an injury, will it appear acutely and they'll know they need to be seen by a sports medicine physician or is it, like how does it, man how does it show itself? For the ACL you mean? Mm -hmm. um, good question. So a lot of times you'll, they'll feel a pop when they, when they have that twisting injury. Um, and once they feel that pop, then they're seeking care. Okay. The knee will generally swell up. So if somebody comes in and they have a swollen knee, that's a pretty good sign that we need at least more imaging or a better exam to make sure that the ACL is not torn. Okay. Um, so they're usually struggling quite a bit to, to put weight through it and they're seeking treatment. And painful. And painful. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Anything I didn't ask that I should have asked? That no, would be I interesting think this is great. Audience. It seems okay. like you've already been through this with your kids. You know? I have been through a few injuries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I have old knees, too. Yep. So. <laughs> but anyways, I want to thank you very much, yes, thanks Dr. For Daniel having me. Day. Appreciate thank it. you. Thank and you, Michelle. Please continue to submit the questions, and we will respond uh, with answers. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Michelle. Have a great day.